everything. Luke, Mike. I don't mean Mike. It's just a term, space, time, and it's got to quantize gravity, and I can even predict the exact moment that the Earth will. Oh no, it's not going to work. Some scientists risk the perils of the outdoor world, but I prefer to pass my time in the confines of my office. With just a little scratching of a pencil on some recycled paper, that all so fragile fabric of our great universe begins to free at the edges. The humble physicists enter the world, ruled by principles of great uncertainty, devised by spooky, immortal cats. <laughs> just last week, I encountered a parallel me living in a perfectly triangular universe. He was talking about quarks and seemed to think they might have something to do with black holes. No, 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 white dwarfs. Something to do with multicolored white dwarfs, he said. Yes, very interesting. Uh, tragically, so just after telling me this, he got erased by a theoretical dark rubber. <laughs> Indeterminate determinacy, that's what I always say. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, in this strange world, you've really got to have your wits about you. There's great giant number crunches and this grand unified theories of nothing and the string, but I imagine the string, this entangled knots of some kind of dating twine coming up everywhere you go. <laughs> great quantized perpendicularity to our time dilating. I just have time to tell you, with exact improbability, that a physicist is indeed a most confused being. Bobby Gray is the poet. everything except why is it that physicists can never get pants that are quite long enough? <laughs> they just came this size. <laughs> when you Remember nick them from your flatmate's wardrobe and what's she wearing tonight? They cost, they, they cost $50 then. <laughs> oh my god, yes, physicists, they saw you coming. Um, so you really are a theoretical physicist? Yes, really, yes. You're a bit, if you don't mind me saying, spunky to be a theoretical physicist. I mean, I've met a few of them. <laughs> Can you lift your hat and show I, me the... I am balding. Ah, oh, that's and I'm, not I, I'm only 24. <laughs> Still spunky. But no, uh, I remember Dr. Carl saying this theory about um, physicists being testosterone-laden um, beings with huge sperm counts and they have so much testosterone that they get bald prematurely. So That's uh, exactly what's going on. Yeah, here. That, that's that what is I a thought. scientific analysis, mind you. What I especially love is that you mentioned everything in physics without telling us anything about what you did. And even though you used jargon, it was the kind of jargon we've all heard of before. And then you really went for gold by mentioning recycled paper. So you got the environmentalist vote. That's right. <laughs> I do use 100% recycled paper. I pull it out of the recycled bin. <laughs> You're right on the other side. Good man, Luke. Now, without totally blowing our minds, can you give us some idea of what aspect of theoretical physics you're working on? Uh, I'm looking at a quantum mechanics problem, mm -hmm. which is uh, the world of the very small things. And Don't patronise me, Luke. No, no, no not, not for your benefit. No, 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 for these other folks, yeah. the, the, the uh, yeah. practical yeah. scientists. Yeah. Um, They're not art students. No, yeah. no. Anyway, um, basically problems in this field sort of pose themselves mathematically, so... I'm sort of in a mathematical repertoire and then just trying to find a way out. Any and, luck um, so far? No, I had a very, very good dead end today. It was, it was very satisfying. Oh, that's death. nice. It's great when you butt your head right up against them. That's right. I took a really big hole yeah. and got right to the end. <laughs> and then, then there was a rock. Oh, yeah. At least you're keeping yourself fit and busy. Well done, Luke Yates. <laughs>